Do you think Australians understand the symbolism of, of Jerusalem enough? So we'll get onto those points you're about to make in a minute, but hmm. do you think we understand the symbolism, symbolism of Jerusalem adequately enough? Uh, probably not. I mean, it was interesting, uh, Jordan Peterson was uh, in Jerusalem not long ago, and with tears in his eye, he explained how uh, the future of the world has often revolved around events that have happened uh, in Jerusalem. And um, you, you can see it. Australia has a great tradition uh, there. Um, in a few days at the end of October is the anniversary of the Battle of Beersheba, where the Anzacs uh, fought in what became known as their greatest victory of World War I, the charge of the Light Horse Brigades, which cleared the roadway uh, towards Jerusalem, which was liberated six weeks later. So, so many things through history, through religion, through culture, through civilization have the heartbeat of Jerusalem uh, as the basis. But even if you're not into all that stuff, um, you go to Israel and you see the parliament, the Knesset is in Jerusalem. You see the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land is in Jerusalem. Um, you see that the Prime Minister's residence and the other, and most of the uh, government departments are there. It meets the definition of the capital of a state. But how would, just, just playing devil's advocate here, how would moving the embassy hmm. compromise that? Uh, it wouldn't. It couldn't compromise it. I mean, we, we saw a, a grand experiment uh, a few years ago when uh, President then, then President Donald Trump uh, decided that he would actually implement American law and recognise uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and move the US embassy um, to Jerusalem. And there were the naysayers who said, oh, this is going to provoke conflict, uh, there are going to be riots, there are going to be attacks. And after a very short period of time, the reverse occurred and it actually uh, heralded in uh, what became known as the Abraham Accords, which was a set of peace deals between Israel and the more moderate uh, Arab states. So we often sit back in our comfortable um, Western uh, environments and think, oh, we, we know how things work. But the values in the Middle East are different. And it's actually principle and strength which are respected uh, in the Middle East and respect uh, gains more results than uh, the sort of compromise negotiations that we're sort we're used to doing uh, in the West. Well, I, so I don't. What, yeah, I, I don't think this. I don't think this move's getting much respect in in Israel. I mean, the the Israeli Prime Minister um, Yair Lapid tweeted, "Quote: We can only mm. hope that the Australian government manages other matters more seriously and professionally." Now, that's a very no. diplomatic insult, don't you think? It's uh, the first of its kind, as far as I know. Uh, Australia has been uh, a reasonably close ally with Israel um, since uh, it was first recognised through a resolution in the United Nations uh, in 1947 and then fought its war of independence in 1948, became uh, a state. And ever since then... There's been a, a reasonably close working relationship. I don't think there has ever been an occasion where an Israel prime minister has given such a backhand insult, um, basically saying, uh, Australia, you're acting in a shoddy and unprofessional way. And frankly, on, on this occasion, um, he's right. He went on to add that uh, Jerusalem uh, is the eternal and united capital of Israel, and that will never change. And indeed, that is Israeli law, that Jerusalem is the eternal and united capital. So we have here Penny Wong um, sort of challenging and undermining the law of a close ally, which is quite extraordinary.